I think one of the best skills I have learned over the last several years is my ability to find signal in noise. My ability to work out what is fact from fiction. Now, I'm not saying that I am a oracle of truth. I'm not saying that I am right about everything 100% of the time. That would be completely wrong, utterly ridiculous, and complete bullshit. But as I have made these series of critical thinking videos, I have been reflecting on what principles I have developed in order to develop this skill of determining what is fact from fiction. And it brought me back to one of my favorite books I read years ago. So today we're going to pull seven principles from that book and apply it to the real world so we can develop the world's greatest bullshit detector. And to do things a little bit differently today, I want to bring you back to the video that inspired these series of videos. And as we go through that, I'll be highlighting where these seven principles or how I like to call them, these seven instincts, were triggered and you'll see them in actual practice. So if you're ready, let's do it. The video opens up with a comparison of seed oils to sawdust. And it's pretty sneaky why Joseph would actually add this into the video, especially up front, because it makes it more believable that something similar is happening with vegetable oils as well. It's a very compelling story. And automatically, my first instinct is triggered and I become aware that this video is going to be pretty one-sided. It's going to be presented as a single perspective. And so I need to be aware and wary of the other instincts that will be triggered to come. As the video continues, Joseph makes his intent in terms of the argument he wants to put forward much more clear. And the argument is vegetable oils are toxic. He continually comes back to the correlation between vegetable oils being correlated with obesity, but then he also says that it's just a correlation by itself, it doesn't mean much. He still put it in the video though. He still decided to plant that seed in your mind that this is going to be something toxic for you. He also backs it up by saying that there is some data, there's some research saying that the consumption of vegetable oils is going to reduce your lifespan by having readily oxidizable fats within your cells. He, what Joseph is doing is that he is constantly raising the stakes. There isn't much more costly than losing literal days, weeks, years off your life. That is the second instinct. Always be wary when something is being presented with exaggerated risks and exaggerated consequences. Now, as a side note about risk management, I am a chemical engineer. I deal with mitigating risk basically every day. So it's useful to know what risk actually is. Risk is the product of the consequence times the likelihood. So a, a lethal event can still be low risk if the possibility of it happening is near zero. You don't actually have to dwell into the science about what Joseph is saying to become aware that maybe this isn't the whole truth here. Maybe there's another part of the story that I'm not being told. And this is exactly what I'm thinking as I was watching this video. It's very enticing to blame vegetable oils for everything bad in society. Heart disease, obesity, diabetes, and death. It provides a very simple answer to a very complicated problem. But as we know, the real world, real life, truth is a lot more complicated than that. Unfortunately, we like to find something we can blame or someone that, someone that we can blame to make a bit more sense out of the complicated world that we're living in. So I have already kind of touched on this instinct itself, but I want to show you something in this video that if you weren't paying really close attention, you probably would miss. And it is very revealing. Vegetable oil consumption increased dramatically from zero to 80 grams per day. The consumption correlates to increases in obesity and diabetes. Joseph also uses the example that the consumption of saturated fats have remained constant over a century. There is no coloration between heart attacks and saturated fats, but there is a spike in vegetable oils and heart attacks, but he doesn't put the two on the same graph. Because what you will notice is vegetable oil consumption continues to go up, but heart attacks start to decrease again. So no, it's not that simple. What else is going on here? Having a single perspective really limits you to only one point of view. Data by itself is nothing. 
It's the interpretation that brings the data to life. The next instinct is not actually that big of a deal in this video. Most of the time, Joseph does this pretty well. But to give you an example, I want to show you this. Joseph tells us that the seed oil industry is $100 billion. It sounds absolutely massive, but is it really? My alarm bells always get triggered when I see big numbers presented by themselves. Because when left alone, big numbers are always going to look big. Instead, we should find ways to either bring perspective to have something to compare it to, or, or ideally divide it. For example, if you divide the seed oil industry by the size of the world economy, it would be about 0.1% of the global economy. Not so huge anymore, right? Like I had mentioned before, Joseph's use of numbers is actually pretty good. But I want to give you an example of what good use of numbers actually look like from this video. He uses the example that 6 tablespoons of oil equals 720 calories, which is about 33% of your recommended daily intake. So here you're given the average amount of oil consumed per day, what that means in terms of calories, and then it's also divided by what your recommended intake should be. So you can get a better understanding of just how much this actually is. When we are thinking critically about something, it becomes very easy to hyper fixate on the details and then lose appreciation of the broader strokes of the information we're consuming. Instead, we want to keep in perspective of how the story is communicated at a whole. Is it presented in a overly negative way? Or is it presented in a overly nostalgic way? It's very obvious that Joseph is presenting an overly negative view of seed oils and also a pretty nostalgic view of animal fats. If I told you that the thing that is added to all of your foods is extracted with hexane, then bleached and treated at high temperatures, you would be concerned. But the problem is you don't have a very good technical understanding of what these processes are and how they work. So of course, you're going to be over, over consumed with fear. Honestly, it's one of the unfortunate truths of making pseudo-scientific videos on the internet aimed at the general public. It just can't be very nuanced because as soon as it is nuanced, the story becomes less compelling. Therefore, the video reaches less people, it performs poorly, and Joseph won't be able to afford his weekly stick of butter. This last instinct doesn't actually apply to this video at all, because it's about the call to action. Joseph doesn't actually tell you to go into your pantries and throw out everything that contains vegetable oils. For now on, you only cook your food in lard, butter, and animal fat. He just doesn't do that. In principle though, you need to be wary when someone is calling for urgent and drastic action. Take Iman Ghazi for example. He's a young YouTube millionaire in the personal finance and self-development niche and he loves to put together these free events where he drums up a problem. In the one that I'm thinking about right now, he talks about your last chance at freedom. This is your last chance and if you want freedom, you must buy my course because that is the only way you're going to avoid modern day slavery. It's urgent, it's drastic, and I don't like it. Joseph's video has set off most of my bullshit detectors. So does that mean I think it's a bad video and you should not watch it? You might be surprised. No. I actually really do like the video and I will continue to watch other videos that he makes. These seven instincts allow me to determine when I'm not being told the whole truth, and instead just one side of the story. And so I'm not going to treat the video as the whole truth. Instead of looking at the details, I'm looking for the principles to take away from it. I'm not focusing on the noise of the video, I'm looking for the signal, the principles, the message that is being said in between the lines. The hidden message is a reinforcement of the basic fundamental principles of nutrition, calories and nutrients. It's a reminder that maybe I am putting a little bit too much oil into my fry pan. Maybe I should be using a 
extra virgin olive oil rather than vegetable oil. I probably shouldn't be eating burgers, pizzas, and really greasy fast food multiple times per week. I should be I should be prioritizing my own cooking with whole foods, non-processed foods that are dense in nutrients. If this video provides people with the motivation to cut back on their oil consumption and clean up their diets, then that is 100% definitely a good thing. But it becomes problematic when people believe that they can eat as much saturated fats as they possibly want with no with no health effects. It it defies first principles, it defies thermodynamics because calories in equals calories out. In the video, Joseph actually brings up the argument that a dude went on to a croissant diet which had no vegetable oils, only butter and saturated fats, and yet he lost weight. Well, of course, if he's only eating croissants and he's in a calorie deficit, he will lose weight. It's not telling me anything, it's a bad argument. I'd I know why Joseph's included in the video because it aids his storytelling, but it's, yeah, it's, anyway, that's a rant that I went on. The point is we need to be looking for the overall message of what is being told to us so that we can take that away, add it to our pool of knowledge, and then move on without getting angry and reactive about it. But unfortunately, the internet has broke many of our brains. So if you want to make best use and capitalize on these seven instincts you just learnt, then you need to know the best way to fix your broken brain. So watch that video there and I'll see you there. Bye.